In this video, I'm going to do a step-by-step -step build of this circuit. This is an A-stable multi-vibrator demonstration circuit. And uh, here's the schematic for this circuit. If you notice the parts, the components are not laid out exactly like they are in the schematics. Schematics are just a guide. They mostly show you where the connections are. They don't really tell you how you have to lay it out. This is the easiest way i found so far to lay out this circuit on a breadboard. So now I usually do the transistors first. They don't really spread out very well on the breadboard. It's best to keep the three leads and uh, rows right next to each other. So here's the bottom of the board. I have the board turned sideways. The flat side of each one of these transistors is pointing this way. Right now the flat side is to the right. And when you look at the flat side, the one on the left is the emitter, the middle lead is the base, and the top lead is the collector. So when you look at the schematic, this is the emitter where the arrow is, the base is in the middle, and the collector is up here. Now, it doesn't matter which way it's facing as far as the schematic is concerned. Usually, you just uh, point it in the direction where the wire is coming to the base. And also with this circuit, the emitter goes right to ground. So I can just throw these jumpers right on there. As you see here, the emitter of both transistors goes right to ground. So that's a really easy part of the circuit. It's best to get the easy parts out of the way. And then there's a couple of spots where these two wires jump to the other side of the circuit. I also left those there. Uh, jumpers are kind of limited with their size and stuff. Uh, I'm gonna attach the capacitor, I'll show you that next, but uh, it's a little easier to adjust the spacing of the capacitor than finding the right jumper. I actually made this jumper that uh, leaps over here for going over a 555 timer and so I wanted to get the spacing based on this one. So now we come to a tricky part of the wiring. Here you can see the positive side of the capacitor is connected to the collector of the transistor which is the top pin because the flat side is to the right and that's on both sides of the circuit when you look at the schematic you'll see that and then the negative side that connects to the jumper that goes to the base of the other transistor as you can see here this one this capacitor connects to that collector but then the other side the negative side comes across the circuit to the base of the other transistor and so the tricky part though was if I put the capacitor to look more like that it would cut across the board and it doesn't really fit well that way I found it's better just to work its way down and then come back up so as you can see in this case following the schematic is probably about impossible but uh, this works so now we come to the LED. The LED also connects to the collector as did the positive side of the resistor. So this one's really easy. We just put the long lead above the collector and the short lead into the row that uh, the transistor collector is on. That's because this is the cathode here. This needs to be more negative to conduct and up here is the anode, the long lead, that needs to be more positive to conduct. And I already inserted the other one over there in the same way. So now of course the LED needs the protective resistor which comes to positive and here's another reason why I wire it this way. Instead of using jumpers at some point I try to make it where I can use the resistor as a jumper connecting in this case to positive and then here's kind of a mirror Basically, uh, they're the two same type of circuits connected across there. This one goes right from the long lead of the LED to positive two. And finally, we have these resistors here, which connect directly to positive, but then the other side, it's the negative side of the capacitor, and then the opposite side uh, transistor base, the middle pin. So, as I said down here, here's the negative side of the capacitor and then next to it's a jumper that brings it to the base of the other 
transistor over there. So we can just plug this resistor there since positive comes all the way down on both sides because of these two jumpers. I can just connect the resistor on the same row as those two to positive and same with the other side because it does the exact same thing. So that's all there is for putting that circuit together. I'm going to go over uh, how this works in the next video. These are the values of the components I used. Uh, they don't have to be exact, but uh, if you want the circuit to operate the way that mine does, then you know it's best to get the same value components or close as possible. And of course, you need to turn it on. So I plug the battery which powers both rails thanks to the jumpers down at the bottom and you can see that it works.